Bet you can't guess what this one's about. Okay, so let's talk about your audio. Whether it's streaming, YouTube videos, podcasts, audio is, especially for streaming... Okay, sorry to interrupt you past me. Future Braythorn here. I was editing this video, and it was turning out to be about 25 to 30 minutes long. So, instead of doing it all in one long video that's going to put everyone to sleep, welcome to the sound series. This is part one, microphones. A top priority. How many YouTube videos or Twitch streams have you enjoyed with the audio turned off? It's just not the same. And with really good audio, it will make someone stop browsing and stay on your stream or keep watching your YouTube video. It makes a huge difference. There are a world of options out there for getting your voice through the internet into other people's ears. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about five ways that we can improve your audio in your stream, in your videos, in any content that you create. So let's talk about the first part of this. And to me, it's very important to understand different microphone types. And clearly I have a little bit of a setup going on here so we can explore that. There are two very different types of microphones that I have here. Most of them are condenser microphones, okay? Now these catch a lot more sound and they're a lot more sensitive too. So there's that one caveat to them, but they catch higher frequencies and lower frequencies than say something like a dynamic microphone. You'll also notice that these are a little farther away, but we're gonna talk about mic positioning a bit later. Let's take a little tour through the microphones that we have set up here. We've got a headset microphone. We have a very low cost, condenser microphone, and we have a ProLine dynamic microphone. If you've ever done karaoke, you've held one of these. Then we have the Elgato Wave 3 condenser mic, and we have the Shure KSM32. So let's take a second, and we're gonna go through each one, and we'll see if you can sort of spot the differences in how these microphones respond, and the quality of audio that they can capture. This is how a cheap condenser microphone sounds with a few filters applied in OBS. Test, test, test. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Um, obviously, there was a loud hissing whenever my voice would come on. Condenser microphones are typically a lot more sensitive and it catches a lot of nuances to your voice. It catches higher frequencies and lower frequencies than a dynamic microphone can usually capture. So if you want some kind of condenser microphone, room treatment is usually needed and all of that. Now, the reason it will be quiet and then suddenly hiss when I'm speaking is because there's a noise gate attached to it, which will suppress any ambient sound that we don't want whenever you're not talking. Then it'll pick up the fact that you're talking and there you go, you have your talking and a hiss in the background. So not great, but uh, also very cheap microphone. Take a look, this is what that looks like. Um, it might be better than the headset audio, but we'll see when we get to that. All right, let's, let's hear the next one. This is how a reasonably priced dynamic XLR microphone sounds with a few filters applied in OBS. You hear how we get uh, that boomy, you know, radio host sound to it. It's very nice. And um, there are quite a few uh, USB microphones that have that sort of sound to them. Uh, these are absolutely popular for streamers. If you've ever seen the Shure SM7B, it's a dynamic uh, microphone. And these, you sort of, that's why you see the streamers when they're talking like Devin Nash, he's just like right up into it because that's how these work. They're designed so that you don't catch a lot of room sounds. And if you don't have any acoustic treatment in your room, these are fantastic. They really, really help to isolate your voice, just as if you were a vocalist on stage at a live performance. All right, let's check the headset mic. Let's see what that sounds like. This is how the microphone sounds on the Corsair Void RGB Elite headset. And uh, test, 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 test. There you have it. Well, that sounded like um, that sounded like a gaming headset microphone. And yeah, there are some that are better and some that are worse. With something this size right here compared to something this size, or even this, what is on the microphone, what is physically there 
to react to the vibrations in the air and take that sort of analog signal, turn it into digital, is so much smaller that it's just, it's sort of, sort of an odd mix of very sensitive, but also not able to catch the uh, frequency range of a larger uh, microphone. So you're gonna be bottlenecking yourself on your audio if you use one of these. But if it's all you've got, it's all you've got. And there's no need to go out and buy something crazy right off the bat. This is about looking at your audio and seeing what can be improved, not what you have to have in order to be a legit streamer. Um, if, you're, if you're rocking this, you can mess with your filters in OBS and sort of bring out different frequencies. Just test it out. Get on there, maybe hit record or do a test stream or just monitor your audio back to your own headset and sort of hear what you sound like. And um, I will have a video on VSTs and the filters that you can use in OBS to make your audio better, but we're just giving it an overall speed run right now. This is a speed run. This is an audio speed run. How about that? Not doing too well so far because I do tend to ramble, but we're moving on. So let's, uh, let's take a look at one of my favorite microphones of all time, the Shure KSM32, which is definitely way overpowered for what we're doing here, but let's check it out. This is how the Shure KSM32 condenser microphone sounds with a few filters applied in OBS. So clean, so good. This thing is so good. The Shure KSM32 has had a place of honor in many a recording studio. And uh, why do I have this thing? Well, I'll tell you, I didn't actually purchase this. This was given to me by an amazing customer who was a professional uh, audio producer, music producer, who had just had it sitting in a closet collecting dust. I mentioned that I had thought about doing audio books and stuff like that. So he said, here, take this thing and use it in good health. It is one of the best microphones I've ever used, but it's also a professional level product and not one that I would recommend to anyone who doesn't have knowledge in audio engineering because it is way too sensitive and it is not designed for someone just getting into this kind of thing. This is about a $150 microphone and I use it instead of my beautiful Shure KSM32. Because of the ease of use and the technology that comes with the Wave 3, which we're gonna listen to here in a second. Actually, no, what are we talking about? We're gonna listen to here in a second. You're listening to it right now. I'm not actually using my studio microphone right now. I'm using my Wave 3 to talk to you right now because it is an amazing USB microphone that is totally, in my opinion, changing the game with the audio quality, the software that comes with it, especially the software because of how much you can manipulate it. I don't have the equipment to really squeeze out the most out of this KSM32. I don't have the money to buy that equipment either. If I had a Go XLR, I would totally be using this thing. That's because with something like a Go XLR, you have control of all of your audio channels in a physical manner right there in front of you, built-in compression, built-in EQ, built-in everything that you would pretty much need. Now, to be fair, the Wave 3 does have software that comes with it, but that does not yet have any built-in VSTs or filters like you can use in your OBS software. Good thing is you can use filters and VSTs in your OBS software. And that's one of the things we're gonna be talking about. So I'm gonna move all of these things and we're gonna move on to the next topic because God, this was supposed to be a quick list. Oh, that is much better. Oh, let's uh, take these things off. I really don't need them anymore. We talked a little bit about dynamic versus condenser mics. Now we're gonna get into USB versus XLR. So this is an XLR microphone. It has an XLR connection. In order to run an XLR microphone, you need some kind of device that can receive that signal. I'm gonna regret unplugging everything here, but something like this. This is a, uh, an old PreSonus AudioBox USB. This is about as cheap as you can go if you want to use an XLR microphone. It gives you a connection for an XLR device to your computer. It even has uh, phantom power, which you need to have if you wanna run a condenser microphone, you need phantom power for most of those. Do not run phantom power into a dynamic microphone. You will destroy it. Now, a USB microphone, on the other hand, is what most of you probably have. USB into your computer, and the rest is done with software. 
Easy. Now, I, I hinted at doing a full-on Elgato Wave 3 microphone review. I don't really feel comfortable doing it just yet, because it's still got that new microphone shine for me. I'd like to have it and use it for a little bit longer, so it's not just a knee-jerk reaction kind of review. And also, I've never posted a review before, so I need to work on that a little bit. So stay tuned, and I'll give you the full ins and outs before you go out and buy a $159 microphone, not including accessories. But as of now, I really, really like it, and it's my microphone of choice, even though I have options. Now, why do I have so many microphones? Well, some of them are just gaming things. One of them, one was a gift, and um, the other, I mean, I, I'm an amateur music producer, and I like to make music. There's my MIDI keyboard right there. But also, I was working on maybe even audiobooks. If you guys think I should do audiobooks, let me know in the comments. Just wondering. In any case, one piece of advice I have for you. If you're going to get a USB microphone, get a microphone that has a headphone jack coming out of it. If you have that, and this is something Harris Heller said, and I totally agree, you can keep that as you upgrade other equipment like getting a Go XLR, because that has an audio jack in, so you can use this. Even though it's not an XLR microphone, it can take the input from this while you shop around for whatever XLR microphone you're gonna get. Until you get to the point where you have a consistent thousand viewers at a time or so, you do not need a professional studio XLR microphone and a Go XLR setup. Some of these things I just had from making music now and then. I don't make enough music. I sort of took a break on that once I started doing Twitch and YouTube. Anyway, um, so that's really the only point I want to make if you buy a, a USB microphone, because most of them have come a long way. As for now, this one is what I need. It has my heart, and I'll give a full review when the time comes. So that about wraps it up for part one of the sound series. If you have any questions, feel free to join me on Twitch. I stream every Sunday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Central, right here. Thank you, Sam. Also, feel free to send me any questions you've got on Twitter, at Brayethorn. Until next Monday, take care.